It seems every baby nursery has a theme these days, and today I'm showing you all the sweet details and touches I added to mine to hopefully spark your creativity. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm Katie and this is Katie Failinger DIY. It's a channel devoted to helping you make your home your happiest place. And we do that through techniques, tutorials, and ideas like you'll see in this video. So if you're into that, I'd love for you to join the party, hit subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when new videos go up every Thursday. So nursery themes, oh my gosh. I mean, we could devote hours to the topic, right? I personally poured over Pinterest feeds like a fiend when I designed my twin daughter's nursery. And now I wanna share some of that inspiration with you. Now, a lot of my decor was actually handmade, probably about a third of it, but the rest I scoured the web to find. So to hopefully save you the trouble of endless internet searching, I'm going to put links to as many of the products that I'm going to show you as possible down in the description so that you can check them out for yourself. In worst case, I will have close dupes listed. Just one quick note, Make sure that you watch to the end because I have an important disclaimer about the decor choices I made that you'll definitely want to consider. So I knew that I wanted to go with a woodland theme with a pretty specific color scheme as well. So let's just start there. I chose primarily to go with neutrals, browns, grays, and muted white, and then pops of teal and orange. And even though I have two girls, I purposely wanted to avoid anything too, too frilly or girly. And those colors I felt worked really nicely for the rustic vibe that I was going for. Now, in terms of DIY decor, some of what I made was purely decorative, but most of it was actually functional and served a purpose like these out labels. So I used these on a cube shelving unit that served as the girl's dresser for about the first 18 months. I found thin wood pre-cut into the shape of an owl online, and they were just the right size to use as tags for each of the bins in the cube shelves. So I just drilled a hole through each one, laced a short length of twine through, took a Sharpie to handwrite some labels, and then tied them onto the handles of the bins. That was a really easy project. Now the crib mobiles that I made, not so much. It's not that they were hard, but they were definitely more labor intensive. So I found some natural branches online and basically just accessorized them. So I stained and hung wooden letters with the girl's first initials, tied on some strips of burlap ribbon, and then I glue gunned on these little lightweight bird figurines and also wrapped various sized styrofoam balls in different colored twine and yarn and hung those from the branches as well. I love how these came out. The girls may not need them anymore, but I can't bring myself to throw them away. But guys, the method that I used to wrap these yarn balls is the same one that I used to make an entire wreath out of them. So I have a video showing you how I did that, and I will link it for you up here and below in the description. But please be kind, that is the first video that I ever posted on this channel. Now, to actually hold these mobiles up, we found some sturdy branches in the backyard, then sanded them down and attached them to the wall. And on top of them, I placed these DIY baby monitor casings. Now I was going for the look of little bird's nests atop these branches. And so I took a bunch of crafting twigs and some faux leaves and fashioned a little case for our old generation iPhones. That's what we used as our monitors with a sweet app that we found. And then strategically placed the phones in these cases to point down at the babies so that we could check in on them remotely. And it worked perfectly. One other cool touch was this series of wall art that I crafted. So I used scrapbooking paper as the background mat in these frames and then plucked some large and small faux fall leaves from some stems that I had laying around from my fall decor and just glued them onto the mat. So in the first frame, there are just two leaves representing me and my husband. Frame two represents my husband and me with two little baby leaves growing inside. And frame number three symbolizes, of course, my little leaves being born. In addition, we had two different night lights in the nursery, at least initially. Now, one was a rustic vase made from birch bark that I had filled with stems and some lighted branches. And then I just tied a basic burlap bow around it and set it by the door. This was very pretty, but also very functional because any new parent knows you're in and out of that nursery multiple times in the middle of the night, whether it be for feedings, changing, soothing, binky hunting, whatever. So it was nice not to have to blind everyone by turning on the brighter light. Lights. And then I had a much more subtle night light that I made myself as well. I got this little wooden birdhouse from Michael's, stuck a little light bulb in the back, 
kind of like the ones that you use for those little Christmas village displays. I stained it a natural hue and then hung it on the wall against one of the trees as if it were actually hanging on the tree like 3D artwork. It didn't put out much light, but it was a very cute touch. Also handmade, although not by me, were the girls' crib sheets. Now, their grandmother is a master seamstress, so she took the theme and made these perfectly fitted sheets. So what do you think so far? Is the creative juice flowing yet? Let me know in the comments if you're getting some inspiration to try any of these projects. But if you are not wanting to handcraft anything before your baby arrives, I totally get it. But just keep watching. The next section of this video is for you. All the rest of the cute touches were in fact store-bought. And again, some of it was merely for decoration, but I did have a purpose in mind when buying most of it. Accenting two of the four walls were these cool tree and bird decals. Now these came in a wide variety of colors, but I stuck to the neutral deep brown with orange birds to add a pop of color. Now these were only supposed to last two to three years, but they're still kicking more than four years later. We did attach these ourselves, which was a learning curve. So let me know in the comments if you'd wanna see a video explaining that process. I also had a couple of wood signs hanging as well. This grow wise little owl sign is totally something I'd make myself at this point, but at the time I still hadn't attempted anything like this. So I did just purchase it on Etsy and then I hung it so that it appears as though one of the little orange birds is resting on it. So cute. The other wood sign was in fact a gift and it fits the theme so well, I just love it. It's a really sweet tribute to the girl's birthday with their names, the time of birth and their weight. Now I also definitely needed a couple of lamps and I wanted to have a floor lamp next to the rocking chair since that would be where we'd be reading our bedtime stories. And after much scouring of the web, I found this perfect one with a pole that's designed to look like a tree branch and then a nice warm tan lampshade to keep the light nice and soft. I also wanted a table lamp just to fill the room with some warm light that didn't come from the overheads. And I couldn't believe my luck when I found this lamp with a base shaped like an owl. It was just too perfect and it was shockingly pretty inexpensive. I think I only paid about $35 for it. On the floor, meanwhile, I wanted to have an extra soft rug for the girls to lay or play on with their little baby soft skin. So I went with this white faux sheepskin one. It's so soft and so fuzzy. Also on the floor, I used a heavy bookend as a doorstop. Now, when the windows are open, the airflow tends to slam our doors shut. So I needed something that was heavier to hold that in place. And I found these nice weighted bookends shaped, of course, like owls. So I used one as a doorstop and then the other as an actual bookend over on the side table by the rocking chair. So with babies, you need tons of storage. And that's actually one of the things I talk about in my video about nursery setup and organization. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link it up here and in the description. But one of the items that had to have its own container was binkies. We had so many of these from the hospital and gifted to us. So I just corralled them all in an apothecary jar and set it on the bottom shelf of my side table. I also placed a pretty tall hanging mirror with a rustic jute rope frame to complete this section of the nursery. My window treatments, well, those were actually pretty homespun as well. I went with burlap curtains and found these cute pine cone curtain rods. I love these. And for another added touch, I also placed a couple of ceramic owl statuettes around the room to tie it all together. So here's that important disclaimer. Make sure you consider baby proofing when you decorate. So I got away with some of this decor for about the first year or so. But once your baby learns to crawl, pull up on furniture, all of that, you'll need to have a plan to either baby proof everything or move it somewhere your little one can't get to it. So I had to move my binky jar and the ceramic owls to a higher shelf. I moved the twig nightlight out of the nursery altogether. So just keep that stuff in mind as you're planning everything out. To me, it was worth it. Even if I only got a year out of some of that decor, but you may choose to just bag it all together if it would eventually need to be baby proofed. But now you have about 20 ideas or so to spark some inspiration as you decorate your own nursery. And you know, it's funny, having the deadline of my girl's arrival meant that our nursery ended up being the most furnished room in the entire house because it had to be ready in time. So it's just funny how those deadlines will motivate you. But if you're expecting, congratulations. Planning for a baby, let alone twins, was a wholly new and totally overwhelming experience. So I know where you're at and hopefully this video is gonna bring you some enjoyment as you work through it all. Now, if you are into all things DIY like I am, I would like to personally invite you to join my creator community 
nearly 1,300 people have already signed up for that, and I'd love to have you join us. In the meantime, if you like this video, let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with your creator and DIY loving friends. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified when new videos drop every single Thursday. And in between uploads, stay in touch with me. I'm on all the social platforms. They're all listed below, and I always love hearing from you. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Keep creating your happy place, and I will see you next Thursday. I am ridiculous. That looks good, right? I'll link it up here for you. Easy there, girl. Don't know how you do the voodoo that you do so well. Why is this standing up straight? What is that? I look like a who from Whoville. Straight up, wait up, hold up, Mr. Lover. Breathe out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 da. Bow legged one. <laughs> here I go, here I go, here I go again, girls. What's my weakness? Okay, then. Uh, how am I feeling about this? I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Rhythm Nation? I didn't know I had that on here. If you're into that. Do any of you have conversations with yourself when you're by yourself? Like actual conversations like I'm having right now? Let's do this!